FlossTube, welcome back. It's been a long time because life and <laughs> and life. It's this summer, you know, I've said it before in the brief moments we've been uh, touching bases. <laughs> um, this summer just had a life of its own, a mind of its own. Um, every time I made plans, it was like, hmm. Just try it. Just just try to stick to your plans and we'll see what happens. Uh, so August, I thought everything was going to go according to the calendar. And I, I was feeling really super good for the first couple weeks. And then I got slammed with the most wicked cold. Um, we worried that it was uh, the plague, but it, fortunately it was not. Um... It was just a nasty virus that took both my husband and I off our feet for like a solid week. And then I got laryngitis. So even when I started feeling better, I couldn't make a video <laughs> because nobody would be able to hear me. And and then I uh, did a bit of an impromptu trip to Utah to see my sister and her family and her sweet baby, who is my new obsession. And... <laughs> And so yeah, life life just took a took a turn. Not not necessarily for the worse, just a turn, you know. So I'm back and we're just going to we're just going to hit the ground running. So I had planned originally on doing a whip parade and then a like end of month video and a quilting bee, so like three videos basically in August. What we're going to do because August is no longer here. Welcome to September. The beginning of the best four months of the year, in my humble opinion. I mean, I just love it. I love this time of year as we start to go into fall. We already have leaves falling off the trees, which seems insane, but they've actually been falling for a couple of weeks. And yeah, it's, 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 it's still warm. It's in the mid seventies. Um, so it's, you know, lovely weather actually. <laughs> um, no complaints here. You won't hear any complaints from me. Uh, but anyway, so I was going to do three videos. What I'm going to do is combine the whip parade with the August wrap up, basically. So I found a kind of fun way to do it. So I'm the whip parade is only going to be for what I have actually put stitches into from January till today. Um, which is kind of fun. It was fun to go through and see, oh, look what I worked on and... Um, It'll be fun to share with you. Um, but that makes it so that we can kind of end with what I did in August. It'll just kind of flow right into September and what I've got planned. And yeah, I think it'll work well. And then tomorrow I will film just because I tend to project when I'm doing my videos so you guys can hear me and my voice gets worn out and wear a head laryngitis. I don't really want to, you know, overstress the vocal cords. We like to be able to have people hear us. Uh, when we speak so um so yeah I'm gonna I'll film that tomorrow but that will give some fun catch-up videos for you guys for over the weekend and then all things going well and smoothly without life intervening there will be another video cross stitch video a normal cross stitch video <laughs> in approximately two weeks Cross all all the all the digits, all the arms, limbs, <laughs> eyes, whatever it takes. Um, okay, so I've got stacks here. I'm excited to go. Um, I'm trying to think if there were any specific questions. I know there are a couple questions in regards to quilting bee videos, but I don't think there was anything immediate. If I missed any questions in the comments about cross stitch related things, I will catch them in the next video because I can't think of anything. I don't have it in my notes. So here's hoping <laughs> uh, if I missed your question, I'm so sorry, but I will catch it. I promise. Um, yeah, life is good. 
small update we just had in the United States, we just had Labor Day weekend, which happily coincided with my birthday. And my husband had three days off of work all together, which is like, unless you plan a vacation and take the time off, that is nearly unheard of. <laughs> so it was such a treat. And we went hiking and we, I didn't have to cook once. He spoiled me so much. We ate out at dinner all three days and he made me waffles in bed and we watched an episode of Bob's Burgers while I ate them and it was it was the greatest it was it was such a fun weekend we had so much fun and it was so good especially after a week away to have some time together so happy birthday to me I'm a year older I don't know about wiser, but I'm, I'm a year older and it's good. I'm grateful to be here. So yay. And I have, you know, I've been really good. Should we do haul first? Let's do haul first. Let's do haul and then I'll do, I have a finish to show you like a finish, not a fully finish, but a finish. And, and then we'll jump into the whip parade because I don't have a lot of haul and half of it was gifted to me. <laughs> so bring my little stack over here. Oh, I pushed a button. <laughs> I hope that didn't make sound in the video. <laughs> um, okay, so first I have a monthly subscription to Bestitch Me and one's still in the plastic. I'm sorry, it's going to be a bit wrinkly. So this was this last month, so August. It's called Luna Moth and I get the Lugana. It's so pretty and one of my favorite colors for background. So that was... That was welcome. And then in July, I have to remember <laughs> how long it's been since I've done a video. Uh, the color was lightly salted, but not roasted. It's also Lugana. It's so pretty. It's going to wash out in the video. I just know it is. Let's see. Let me get my little board here and see if that helps. Give it a white background. Oh yeah, that's better. Just the prettiest blush apricot it goes definitely more into the peachy apricot than the pink reads pretty cream on the screen but it's really pretty and i'm already eyeballing it for a project it might get claimed pretty quickly but it's been really fun um to be part of a monthly fabric subscription this is my first one ever and i'm really enjoying the consistent slow uh, like trickle additions additions <laughs> Okay, it's gonna be a fun ride, you guys. <laughs> um, I always anticipate this package when it comes in the mail. It's always really fun. I enjoy getting it, and I think I'll continue it at least for as long as nothing changes for the next year until we move, and then I might pause it until we get moved so nothing gets lost in the move. Um, but I'm really enjoying that. It's really helped my my fabric supply, which has up to this point been just basically scraps off of whatever I've purchased specifically for projects. I've not really had much of a, a backup supply of cross-stitch fabric. So it's been fun to grow that. I'm, I'm enjoying that process. And then just starting in August, I started the Floss Fix for Classic Color Works. This is through Fat Quarter Shop. I don't remember where I heard about it. I'm sure somebody mentioned it in a video somewhere or somebody, I don't know, I, I was talking to or something. Anyways, but I thought I love the classic collar works and, um, and I really want to start growing my over dyed collection. So this gives you six every month, which is pretty fun. Yeah. So I got that in the mail and yeah, that was just the new start. So it was just these five colors. It was the C in the C range. It looks like they're doing them alphabetically. And again, I, I am enjoying this thus far. So I think I'll continue that as well, at least through next July until we move. We don't want any any magical cross-stitch supplies getting lost in, in the hullabaloo of moving. Okay. So then I had a very generous and lovely gift from my friend, Judy, Julie. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> I was just thinking of my other friend's name, Judith, and I was like, no, it wasn't from her. And so, and then my brain hadn't quite made it to Julia, and so I thought, Judy, oh my gosh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> but I'm not stopping the video for my embarrassments. Okay, sometimes we just have little brain slips, and Julie, you know I love you, and I'm sorry. <laughs> changed a couple letters in your name there anyways when I had my surgery earlier this summer she so, was so lovely and sent me a note and she was like and I'd love to send you a care package as well and me being completely stoned on <laughs> anesthesia and painkillers because this was literally in the days the first like 48 hours after my surgery I was like, oh, you're so sweet. I would, that would be lovely if that's what you want to do. I always love surprises in the mail. And here's my address. And like a Goomba, I didn't put my apartment number on it. So the mail system brought it all the way here and then sent it all the way back. Anyways, it had a bit of a journey. And bless her heart, she resent it out. <laughs> Despite my brain not functioning. Um, anyway, so here's what was in the sweet care package. She gave me these cute little stickers, which I'm always a fan of little vinyl stickers. I put them on my water bottles and my planners and they're so cute. I'm so excited. And now I can finally use them because I've showed you guys. And this lovely needle minder, which again, you, can, you can't have too many needle minders. I'm gonna add, add it there to the other ones. This pattern, Winter Gatherings by Brenda Gervais, and I'm gonna have to do this this year because that is so cute. That is gonna be a New Year's new start for sure. Like maybe I'll do the countdown again because any excuse to start as many projects as I can before next year when I rein it in. <laughs> but it's so cute. And then she, she claims she doesn't like stitching on 32 counts. So she sent me some of her 32 count overstock on linens, which are beautiful. And they're Nicholas Flamel linens, which I've not used. So that'll be really fun. They feel really nice. And as you can see, the colors are right up my alley. Thank you, Julie, so much. I'm so excited. And again, I'm already eyeballing some of these fabrics for projects. Look at this green. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Anyways, very fun. Thank you, thank you. They will be used and loved. <laughs> and then my August present to myself was the new release of Bella Filipina's The Mad Tea Party, Alice in Wonderland, which I saw, I gasped, I shared on my Instagram stories, and then I bought it. <laughs> because I love it. It's so cute. The details are so much fun. Oh my gosh. I can hardly wait to start this one. I am doing everything in my power to save it for next year, but we'll see <laughs> because I love it. It's not seasonal and I'm pretty much a seasonal stitcher. So I might have to wait. It would be a really fun uh, March start though, which is when I usually stitch my Alice in Wonderlands. So if you hadn't seen it, it's so cute. Go look it up so you can get a better picture of it. Cause through the plastic, it's kind of glary. Anyway, that's my haul, mostly gifts and, uh, some subscriptions and then the one pattern. So I've been super good. I've been super good, but I have a lot of things I'm starting. So, <laughs> Oh, the next few months will be fun. Okay. Oh, finish. Let's show you the finish. You already saw most of this finish last video, but I went out, bought beads with my friend, and she is complete. Oh my goodness. I just finished her last night. I put in the last 30 beads or whatever it was. Virgo by Mirabilia or Nora Corbett, I guess. Same, same. That's what the pattern leaflet looks like. And I started her last year for my birthday because I'm a Virgo. 
And she's so elegant and lovely. And this is the first... This is so funny. I have so many Mirabilias in progress, right? This is my first finished Mirabilia. <laughs> like beads and all. It is It is ready for a press and a frame. Um, and isn't she lovely? <laughs> I was, as I was stitching in the last few beads, all I had was that song in my head. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> oh, I am so pleased with her. Anyways, so I'll have to find a safe way to store her until I can store her pretty much flat. Until I can get a frame for her and get her on the wall. Because I'm very happy with how she turned out. So the only bead that is not as called for are these little ones through here and they go up through her antennae, I think they are, and there's a couple down through this necklace. Um, but they're part of the, what are they called? Magnifica, Magnifica beads, and they are unavailable. I just, I couldn't find them anywhere. Not at my local shop, not at shops online, I, they're just MIA. So I subbed it and I'm pretty happy. Well, pretty happy. I'm super happy <laughs> with how it turned out. So she is done and I can move on guilt-free to my 2023 birthday mirrors uh, since I decided to start both of them. Though I d will say, I if you follow me on Instagram, I did a poll to see like which one to start of the two smaller projects I had. And... It was pretty split down the middle. Lots of people were like, stitch both. And then it was pretty much even stitch this one or this one. So I started the first one, put a full length in, and it's going to stitch up super fast. And the colors are pretty springy on it. In fact, I think she's considered a lavender fairy. I mean, a lavender fairy. <laughs> a spring pixie. Um, and so... My brain just died. Oh, so I started her and I'll share her next video. Um, but I think I'm going to, now that she's got a good start, unless I get like the whim to pull her out again, I think I'll pull her out for like a spring stitching and I'll put more focus now into the other one, which is the September fairy. Anyway, so that's kind of where I decided on that, where I landed um, for this year's birthday stitch. And it was really fun. Somebody on Instagram uh, started this cute little bright floral. I think it's a Carolyn Manning. Um, but in honor of my birthday. And I thought that was really sweet. <laughs> An excuse to start a new project, right? I love a new start. It's so, I don't know, it's, it, really, it releases all the good endorphins to my brain. It's a big dopamine hit. <laughs> That's probably why I have so many projects. Okay. Should we start the whip parade? Let's do it. Let's start in January. J Whoa. January. Let's go back in time nine months to when it was cold and dark and, and I was stitching wintry projects. <laughs> okay. So I did not press any of these, you guys, because I've been partying for three days and then I was out of town. <laughs> but I pulled them out in order as much as I could tell. So it was interesting. So I, I was gifted a book of days, March-ish, February, March-ish. And um, it must have been in February because I started it in March. And so my first couple months are naked because I wasn't using it. And finding what I stitched those months, like finding the notebook that I scribbled down my plans in was a mess. It was a hot mess. I'm really enjoying, even just for like the tracking side of, you know, life, cross stitch, I'm really enjoying having the book of days. And I think, no, I, I'm pretty confident I will, <laughs> I will get one when they release the 2024 one because it's worked really well for me. Oh man. Yesterday it felt so good to stitch. Look at this. Nothing. Five days of no stitching. My hands, my fingers were itching. They were itching for some stitching. It felt good to stitch last night. Um, 
anyways, so, but for the months that I did use it, it was super easy to be like, oh, this is exactly what I stitched on through this month. And it made for a good, I think, I don't think I missed anything. I mean, I may have missed something. It's not impossible. Where do I put this? I don't know. <laughs> Just stuff it on the shelf. Um, anyways, you're like, where are the projects? Bring out the projects. Bring out the projects, Laura. Did I say my name is Laura? I don't know. I just kind of dove into this. Like everybody knows who I am and what I'm doing. Hi, my name is Laura. This is a cross stitch channel. <laughs> Lala D stitches. Oh, good Lord. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's just do it. Anyway, things are not pressed, but they are in order. So let's, let's do it. And I think I zipped all my bags, which is great. This was a uh, new year, new start. The Snow Maiden by Nora Corbett. She is gorgeous and I can hardly wait to pull her out again in January. And she'll get more attention this year than she did last year. Which, you know, wasn't terrible. She, oh, with my cute little needle minder. This is where she got to. Oh, she is so beautiful. Okay, I got more done than I thought. <laughs> Oh, she's beautiful. I can hardly wait to get down into her dress. I think this is like the bow here. And then we get to go down into some of the really beautiful um, aquas. But stitching her hair was really fun. It's mostly, um, oh my goodness, I'm saying um a lot. Now it's going to be in my head. It's, it's a lot of Gloriana water lilies. I think that's what it is. Oh, Karen Water Lilies, yeah. Anyways, beautiful, beautiful. I said two different brands of silk. <laughs> Gloriana Water Lilies. <laughs> it's fine. This fabric is, picture this plus, Pansy. It's a 32 count. Whoops, and it's drooping. Anyways, so that's that. And because this is a whip parade, I will try not to linger too long on, you'll get a good look, but I'll try to keep moving because <laughs> it's so easy for me to look at it in the camera and be like, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> this one you've seen more recently if you've watched my other videos. It's a Barbara Anna kit from Nitka. It's exclusive to the site. It's a Russian site. It is, they are still currently shipping. Um, but I know that there are, there's a lot of political stuff going on with that right now. And so, you decide what works best for you. This is a drama free zone, by the way. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't drama. Okay. That's where I am. <laughs> I just like stop talking. Okay. It's been a month, you guys. So I've been focusing on her. I finished winter. I finished spring. I made good progress on summer, but, um, you know, I just lost my mojo for it. She'll stay out. I'd really like to finish her this year. So when the mood hits, I will, yeah, I will pick her up again <laughs> but she's lovely it's really fun to stitch on the fabric is just what was included in the kit it's a uh, you know kind of a raw linen uh, it's lovely I really enjoy it and I actually have my eyeballs on a couple of other kits I don't know when that would happen but um, yeah that was really fun I ordered that a couple years ago <laughs> So I finished projects quickly. <laughs> okay. This one is Cottage Garden Samplings, the Swan. Oh, if you wanted, I always get whenever I show that one, where can I find it? I did post below the video, my August video, a link directly to the website. So if you are interested, that's where you can go to find it. Uh, anyway, moving on. The Swans is so beautiful. I had a bit of a heartache with it 
as I recall, I had to rip out a substantial amount. <laughs> but that's okay. I kept plugging. This is where we left it. It's on this spectacular fabric. Seraphim linen. It's a 32 count. It's called Witching Hour. And I wish I had a yard of it because it's amazing. Oh, they're so lovely. Ooh, I'm excited to pull this one out again, too. <laughs> it actually stitches really quickly. It's mostly DMCs and a couple of overdyes, but the overdyes are really um, subtle. So I'm not as, ooh, zipper, sorry. That was just talking habit. I'm not as worried about um, just stitching normally. A lot of the times with overdyes, in fact, most of the time with overdyes, floss. I will single stitch, completion, single stitch, um, instead of doing rows, you know, through a row, back a row, kind of like a typewriter style. Um, but, but it hasn't been necessary. So it actually stitches up really quickly compared to having to do single rows. Um, really fun. Anyways, it's beautiful. I have several of theirs in progress and several Patterns I've collected. <laughs> Barbara Anna Designs. She Mad Hatter Dreams. I love this one. And somebody, I think it was Lost in Stitches, Lisa. She started it around the same time I did, and she's almost done because she's amazing. And <laughs> and I tend to be a bit hmm, fluid. <laughs> we'll, we'll say it that way. <laughs> in my projects. I bounce like a be from flower to flower, from project to project. This is how far I got before it got put away. Mmm, she's really pretty. It'll be fun. I'm so excited to do the caterpillar on top of the hat. I think the blues will really pop off of this gray, which is just a basic gray. Let's see if I can find the info card without dropping this. <laughs> 28 count steel gray. Oh, it's a discontinued one. I forgot about that. But there are lots of colors very similar to it. As I recall, it was one of several grays that were, I mean, it was basically like, close your eyes and pick one. You're going to get the same effect. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So we're into February. February, not March. Why did I think March? I don't know why. February, where I stitch Alice in Wonderland. This one's Gera, uh, Kyoko Maruka, Maruka, maybe? I love her designs, Japanese designer. She has a book, actually, that just dropped, I think, on the 3rd. Um, and I pre-ordered it, but it's been delayed. So I'll show you that when it, whenever it comes, but it's gonna be so cute. It has uh, these really sweet monthly charts. Anyways, but I love her stuff. She does really, really cute designs and she has a whole series of kind of literary uh, designs. Anyways, so that's the full thing, Alice and the Caterpillar. And I'm stitching this on another solid linen because sometimes solids just are the sweet spot. Ooh, and it's cute. Oh my goodness. It's so cute. So fun. Yeah, I got a lot done on that. Both of those were new starts, both of my Alice in Wonderland ones. They were ones that had the pattern for quite a while, and it was just, this year has been, new starts have just felt good this year. And so I've kind of just embraced it as I've been going along, and so I have a lot of whips right now. <laughs> what you are seeing is not a full accounting of all my projects. It's fine. <laughs> um, but it's felt really good, and I think next year I'm going to try being more on the make progress on what I'm already working on. I'm not going to say I'm not going to start new things, because that is just not realistic for me. But I am going to slow my roll on it and work on some of the amazing projects I have going. Maybe get some done. Oh, Mojo Stitches in the Library. 
There is a casual sal going with this. Me and Julie, my friend Julie, who sent me the fabric. Um, anyways, it's so pretty. It's with the cottage, uh, am I saying this right? Yeah, card, cottage garden threads from Australia, which are stunning. Here, stop talking, Lauren. Just show them the cross stitch. <laughs> oh, it's so pretty. I've got to pull this one out. Oh, so I mentioned, was it my last video or the video before? I w reviewed what my monthly themes are for my cross stitch. And January, February were kind of blank spaces because I'd started after that. And somebody said to do literary February. And I love that idea. My brain is swirling around it. So that is the new, the new theme. And then we'll keep with like a magical mythical march and it'll be super fun. Anyway, that is gorgeous. I love it. I can hardly wait to have it finished and put it like next to a bookshelf <laughs> or on the bookshelf or something. Display it near books because that just seems like the appropriate location for it. Okay, my next one, I have to show you a picture on the tablet. It is, here we go, Lakeside Needle Craft Fantasy Sal, which is designed, designed by Doreen Jones. Here, let's see if I can turn it. There we go. It is so cute. It's so much fun. And earlier this year, I was moving right along on it. I'm showing you the wrong one. That one's really cute too. I didn't work on that one. Okay. Oh my goodness. This one is actually, oh no, oh nuts. Well, it's gonna remain a mystery. So this one is actually, I have that one going too. I just didn't really work on it. <laughs> this is called Magical Creatures by Clouds Factory. I'm such a good plus tuber. <laughs> good heavens. What happens to my brain? It's so wrinkly. Mm. So I have the full border done on this wrinkly monster. It's so pretty. I'm actually really enjoying this one too. And you can see I finished up January. I finished up small details in February. And then I did all of March. And then I wanted flowers and I totally fell off the bandwagon. <laughs> um, Kelly of Pages and Stitches with the and being a, back, a three pages and stitches. Um, she has kept up on this and it's coming along really well. We're both making our own little customizations, which is really fun. It's been fun to watch her do it because she puts her own little twist onto it. I changed my Phoenix. It's um, much more sherbet tones than the original called for. And then my frosty tree is a complete adaptation. I'm also eliminating all of the words. It's supposed to have the months. Like I think it's a Jan, Feb, Mar, maybe March. Um, but I'm just adding additional motifs to fill in those spaces. And that way it's a, uh, it's not as obviously a calendar. So yeah, that one's really fun. Maybe I'll pull it out again one of these days. Just do whatever month I'm on. Um, super fun though. And it's been fun to do the little customizations. It makes it take a little longer because you have to put brain power into it instead of just following, you know, what's been done. Um, but it's been fun. It's a fun thing to do. Okay, moving on. This might be quite the video, people, my friends. It might be quite long. I don't know. I'll keep moving, but it might be a two-parter for you guys. I'm going to do it in one one go. <laughs> but, um, okay. Into Dreamland, my glorious full coverage lady reading in the woods. Oh, she's so beautiful. I've been thinking about her, actually, for the past month or so. <sighs> If I don't pull her out through fall, winter, I will definitely pull her out for literary February. 
and give her a good healthy chunk of time because not only is she gorgeous she's really fun and satisfying to stitch this is my first like truly big full coverage and it just it's so satisfying like I don't know I have five or six heaven and earth designs you know lifetime projects for me <laughs> patterns that I bought and um, I find them so intimidating, so spectacularly gorgeous. I'm always amazed when I see somebody on Facebook in one of my Facebook groups finish a massive full coverage because it is, I know how much work goes into that. Even if you're doing 10 stitches, there are still so many thousands of stitches. It's amazing. Anyways, this was more a, on the scale I could see myself finishing in the next five years maybe. Um, and I got almost a full page finish before I tucked it away. I don't, I think I was just ready for something different when I did that. For a while I was doing, I was stitching on her every Sunday and then my Sundays got busy so she wasn't getting as much attention and I think I just lost momentum. Um, anyways, beautiful though. And really high quality quick kit. Like the Ada is soft. My doorbell just rang. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. A uh, package came, so, but they ring the doorbell, which is lovely, but I rarely hear it. So it was kind of like, hmm, is somebody there? <laughs> Anyways, what was I saying? Oh, the quality, the Letty Stitch Kit, the, it's on an Ada, um, but the, it's so soft. It's, it's lovely to work on. It's not like another kit you'll see later, which has devil Ada in it and, um, makes me want to completely halt progress on it and replace it. Anyways, next one, another Gera, which is, oh, she's so sweet. And I love unicorns. Lady and the Unicorn, super cute. Um, this is a physical copy, but I know that you can get a lot of her copies through uh, creativepoppy.com. A lot of her patterns are available there. I've still got a working thread, it looks like. This was a new start. Actually, was it a restart? I don't remember if it was a restart or a new start, but it was naked fabric when I started stitching on it either ways. Um, so that's how much I got done. And it will be actually another small full coverage. In fact, I think I found that this is like half of it. I totally did not center this on the fabric. I did a corner start, <laughs> but that's okay. Lovely, lovely. This is just rando. I don't know what kind of, it's like an even weave, but it's got like an oatmeal texture to it. And, um, I've done other things on it before and I love working with it. I wish I knew what it was cause I would buy more of it, but what happens when you're working with scraps that one I actually have thought about maybe I'll put that in a separate stack about working on it this month because I could do that if I want to right <laughs> That's not, I, I don't have to stick to my themes I can fudge it a little bit okay this next one is Totoro in the hydrangeas I don't have the full picture saved in here anymore unfortunately I tend to rotate my selection based on what I'm showing you but this unfortunately the store I bought this on Etsy this pattern and it is uh, the store is closed down it's not available anymore but it's so cute you can see the start of the hydrangeas here in this corner and it comes down the flowers are down here and it's a circle um, yeah, it's cute. I love Studio Ghibli. You'll see over time, I have Studio Ghibli shirts and <laughs> it's just, they're such sweet, wholesome stories and I just enjoy them. They will give you all the feels though. They usually make me cry, <laughs> even though I've seen them so many times. Oh, well. It's okay to have a tender heart. Vulnerability is good. Uh, Floral Dreams by Nora Corbett. I saw this and I just 
fell in love. I think she is so beautiful. And another garden lady. I am stitching her on, do I have my little card here? Now, oh, I think it's here. Oh yes, picture this plus Jade. The fabric that is notorious for not wanting to film, right? <laughs> Oh, I got really far on her. Wow. She'll be done next year for sure. So there's just this puddle of blanket down here, some fill in. A lot of this is gonna be beads in these naked spots at this point. And then she has the arch over her. Oh, she's so pretty. <laughs> I'm so lucky to have so many projects I love. So fun. What a fun hobby. <laughs> My stack is getting a little, a little bit like the cake in Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> I'm gonna need a, a broom to hold it up. <sighs> okay, oh, this one's so pretty. If you wanna see this one further done, um, who is it? What is their name? Welcome Stitchery. I don't remember what their floss tube name is. I'll try to link it below. Anyways. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I thought that I thought that had a picture on it. I am so sorry. Good thing it was quick. After the Roses by Ink Circles. It is so gorgeous. Um, I started this one a while back, but I just got a small start on it. So I pulled it out again. Hmm, I don't have my information card. I'm not sure what fabric this is on. Oh, it looks like I have a tag. Never mind. <laughs> Let me completely process all of my thoughts out loud for you. <laughs> Gosh. Filming videos is weird, you guys. It's literally put all your thoughts outside of your head. So that's what I do. Anyways. This is where I am. She's so beautiful on a Mount Air linen plum pudding, which is this lovely pinky, lavender, dusty, oh, it's just lovely. Yeah, this is a fun one, but I have found it is not a quick stitch. It's one I have to pay attention to because even though the motif is repeated, um, in the different quadrants. It's basically the same all four. Uh, there's counting involved. It's not, it's not like do 10 stitches, do 30 stitches, you know, <laughs> which goes pretty quickly once you get into a rhythm. Now it's, you have to pay attention to the chart on that one. Okay, oh, I love this project. So now we're getting into May and Earth Day, my Earth Day start. Let's see if I can turn the page without showing the chart. Once is enough. Leave nothing but footprints, kill nothing but time. Oh, I love this. This is a satisfying stitch. It's from Erin Congdon's uh, Cross Stitch for the Earth, which is just chock full of gorgeous projects. I got this one from my father-in-law for my birthday last year. And so I started one of them, but I have, you can see, like a whole, <laughs> a whole handful of favorites. I am stitching this on, this is a Bestitch Me. It was one of my first Bestitch Me. In fact, it may have been my first monthly fabric. It's called, oh, Ledger, Ledger. And that's how far I got before I got distracted by something else. <laughs> I love the bee. Hmm. And it was fun to get these branches joined because that's gonna be the kind of the building of all the details around the words. It'll be good. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color palette in that one. It's very satisfying, very earthy. <laughs> All right, and 
I did not start this one for my first, there was a sal, my first soda sal, hosted by Tattooed Stitcher and Rogue Mama Stitcher. Um, but this is my first soda. <laughs> my health just, at this point in the year, we're at late May, and my health just started to kind of take a little bit of a temporary dive. So my stitching slowed down a lot. But... She's so sweet. I'm gonna make this one for my niece because she's a blonde haired little little beauty. And it would be fun to have a little fairy on her wall in her bedroom. Obviously she is too young to notice it right now. But she loves, she's so cute. She loves anything with light or sparkles or you know, if it flashes and catches your attention, she's zoned into it. It's really cute. Her starting to connect with the world around her. Kind of magical. Okay. This High Rules by Primrose Cottage Stitches. This looks like I started this August last year. I'm stitching on another Seraphim linen called Sunflower Fields. This one's so fun to do. This one... At this rate, it will probably be another two summers before I'm done with it, but you never know when it will just get under my skin and go really quickly. I'll just focus on it. I do that sometimes. I kind of, I'm super enjoying a project and I kind of throw my plans out the window and just do the one that is making my heart happy. But yeah, this one's cute. I think I did pretty much all of that, like that lower half. Uh, this year. Yeah. It's a really fun project. And I think it was one of my first Primrose Cottage charts. Um, and I'm enjoying it. I've had my eyeballs on um, the, oh golly, it's been everywhere. Trip to the North Pole. It just looks like it would be fun to stitch. Just super cute. Okay, let's see if I can not show the chart again. The Glad Sun by the Blue Flower. Blue Flower, I can speak. <laughs> this one I started in May. And, oh, I love it. It's on a smaller count, though. I think it's a 36. Yeah, 36 count. What color? Picture this plus Sprite. Just this beautiful lavender. My ladybug needle minder, <laughs> which I should probably scoot off to the side if I'm going to put her away for a while. I saw one gal who was, I think it was, was it the Seattle Stitcher? It may have been the Seattle Stitcher. I was talking about how she's pulling her needle minders off and she's putting them on a metal board. Um, so it kind of works like a display when you're not using them, but then they're available if you're that way you don't need as many, I guess, um, which is a cool idea. Um, this might be a good time to go through and do so. Because <laughs> I could always put it back on when I pull that out next spring. Okay. Oh, my, my little time counter is going to be off now because I broke into the video. I don't know how much time in total. Oh, well. So this one is a fandom stitch, long, long time from The Last of Us, and which I love that show. <laughs> um, so when I saw that, I was really excited to do it. You would think I would be a lot farther on it, because it's not a complicated chart, but, and I can't show you because the chart I've already oopsed up once today, but oh, I can show you this longer. The chart is micro sized. It was clearly designed to be used on a device um, and some kind of cross stitch app or just as a PDF and zoomed in on because when I printed it out, it is like, I cannot differentiate. There are like three reds and two or three greens and I cannot tell the difference between the icons on the chart 
So it was really slow going when I did stitch on it and finally I decided, okay, I've just got to use this one on my tablet and it was going much faster at that point. So I made a little bit more progress, but now I know when I pull it back out again, when I rewatch the show, it would be a fun one to be like, oh, I want to do a rewatch. Let's pull out my project that matches it because <laughs> I'm cool like that. Oh, I love this one. Do I say that one? Do I say that every time I pull them out? Probably. Sampler Hill by Brenda Gervais. This is one I found when I was visiting my mom in Nebraska. And I don't think it's a new chart, but it was new to me. And they had a sample of it. Um, and it was so lovely. It was so lovely that I, I kitted the whole thing up which I almost never do all in one swoop, buying all the floss and the pattern and the fabric. Um, I'm, I'm much more of a buy the pattern then eventually buy the fabric and kind of pull the floss together as I go. Or if I don't have the floss, I'll substitute what I don't have in from my stash. But this one, I just loved it. I loved it. And if I was doing Sampler September, this would be on the list. <laughs> the colors are just scrumptious. So, so pretty. So that's how far I got with my new start on that one. It will definitely be back at some point because it's beautiful. And this fabric is I don't know what kind of linen. I know. I think it's probably a lakeside linen or a fox and rabbit. I think that's what we decided last time I said this, but the color is Mayflower. My tag does not have the dyer information on it. Okay, this is my oldest whip. Balloon Glow by Dimensions Gold Collection. And it's horribly mangled, but that's because it's been around for many, many moons. Um, and this is where it is. Oh my goodness, I've got floss everywhere. It will be so neat when it's done. I think I mostly worked on roof lines and filling in these trees when I pulled it out this year. It's beautiful. This one has a lot of emotions for me. <laughs> Good and bad. It's a healing project. Does that make sense? It was a transitionary phase of my life and maybe that's why I haven't pushed with it. Oh, this is, you've probably seen this around, one around. So at this point in the year, we are in May when I did all the sals. <laughs> Treasure Island sal from Owl Forest Embroidery. Uh, this is uh, hand dyed by me, Even Weave, and I'm doing a custom color conversion just out of stash, um, but kind of based on what they used. I slowed down a bit because I, where did the error happen? Somewhere in the banner, I made an error so this is actually one stitch too high and I'm debating whether or not to pull out these stitches and drop it down to where it should be and just have it not quite sit where it would originally in one of the gaps. I, I think that's probably what I'll do. Um, but you know, sometimes when you're making little shifts to compensate for brain g failings, <laughs> um, it takes me a little while to be like, okay, yes, this is really what I want to do. Um, anyway, so I haven't made a ton of progress, but it felt really good to start to get some of that frame in there, get some dimensions on it. It's much farther than I have. The charts are free right now, uh, so I'm still downloading them as they release them so that I don't lose access to them. But, uh, but yeah, it's been... It's been on timeout while I decide what to do before I go any farther. And then I'll have to remember not to gauge off of that. 
because I've definitely done that before while I make an adjustment. And then I forget that I made an adjustment and I count off of the adjusted area instead of, <sighs> yeah. Oh, sorry. Two objects cannot share the same space. <laughs> Okay, so now we jump into, yeah, we're still into June. June, and I started doing some more summer stitching. So Summer at the Shore by Cottage Garden. And this is where I wound up. And this linen is called Outrageous. Oof. I made good progress. I don't think it was a new start. Was it a new start? Yes, I started it in May, I think. And I got like the darkest part of the gray in his wing done. And then I pulled it out again in August. So here's a partial update. You'll kind of get the August update as, as you see it. Cause some of them I touched first. And so I've put them when I touched them first, when I stitched on them first in the year rather than last. Anyways, I made really good progress on this one. I ran out of one of the grays, so I couldn't finish the wing, <laughs> but that's okay. It just had me moving up into the neck and the head, and, and that was very satisfying to get in. Beautiful, beautiful. I love their patterns. I love the kind of quilty textures they put into wings and legs and different parts of their charts. I find that very satisfying. <laughs> Being a quilter. <laughs> Okay, a Plum Street Sampler, Hello Summer, which I thought I would pull out a second time. I started it in May and then did not really work on it again. Got good progress though. Is that upside down? I can never remember on this one. Oh no, that was right. <laughs> this is the eagle here, the start of the eagle. And this is that same outrageous, I don't know who dyed it, but it's gorgeous. It has such warmth and such texture. It's another one I wish I had more of. I've cut it down as small as I could <laughs> to share the love, but, oh, here we go. Fortnite Fabrics, that's what it is. Fortnite Fabrics Outrageous in my glamorous project bag. <laughs> I need to get some more project bags made. I actually have a stack. You can kind of see here. Cut and ready to go. I just didn't get to the machine after my last video, really. Um, okay, so this one is a, another sal that I started in May. Again, you've probably seen it. I'm way behind because I was focusing on seasonal stitching. And I ran into a, a goo blah blah. Um, this is how far I got. Most of the framework, except for the accents, all most of the black framework, I should say. And then I had, I was doing so good through parts like one, two, three. And then I fell off the wagon. So I'm making a little adjustment and it will be great. Um, this is another even weave I dyed myself. <laughs> And I'm loving how it's looking. Uh, I'll definitely pull this out again. I love, I think they've released the final part of it at this point. Um, it's by Lola Crow. Mm -hmm. I must have, it's called the Greenhouse of Oddities. Yeah, Lola Crow cross stitch. And yes, the last one is out. The last one was August 18th. So the full chart is out there. It's floating my email right now. <laughs> and I, I will get back to it, definitely, because I love it. It's beautiful, all put together. And, um, but as with so many of my sals, it has been put on hold. And that's okay. Okay, this next one is Strawberry Fields Forever from the Magical Mystery Tour series. 
I've done the Yellow Submarine. I've now started this one. And then in August, I restarted Octopus's Garden. And I'm excited to show you that one because I made some good progress on it. This one, though, I'm doing on an 18 count coffee dyed, coffee, no, tea dyed. This one was tea dyed Ada that I did. And, um, you know, you can see I'm doing a little bit of ripping here because I did the roof one row too wide. So I'm doing a little bit of a, an adjustment, but I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be really not a big deal. Pretty easy thing to fudge around. Apparently, I, something I've learned this year as I've been talking about my projects is that I actually make a lot of mistakes. <laughs> And I just tend to, unless it is so big that I can't fudge it, like it will just have this ripple effect of problems. It's much easier to fudge on a sampler-like project because if something's a little bit closer or a little bit further apart, it's really hard to tell that that wasn't intentional. But something like a Mirabilia, I will pull them out because it's much harder as you go further in the design to maintain the adjustments if that makes sense anyway so that's how far i got houses are always my nemesis i love how they look but i know <laughs> i know that i stitch them slowly so yeah that's one of the reasons i started on it because i figure once the house is done it'll just it'll just go really quickly <laughs> so getting the house done first is a good thing all right, let's see if I have a picture of this one. Um, it does not appear that I do. Let's see if I can scroll back fast enough to get it because you seeing the, the real deal is gonna help. Oh, fiddle. This is my first Chatelaine, which if you've been following my videos, I'll just chatter at you while I look for this. Uh, excuse the lack of eye contact. Um, but I hope you're stitching anyways. So who wants to look at me? You're here for the cross stitch. Um, my first Chatelaine, which I was gifted. I was gifted. I was gifted the pattern and I was um, gifted a gift card. Thank you, Beth, again. Um, I... I'm still floored by your generosity. Um, anyways, I got a start on it, but my fabric, if you'll remember, smelled like fish. And I felt like, <laughs> like Marv in Home Alone when everybody's like, no, I don't smell. I'm like, but it smells like fish, but it smells like fish and it smells like fish <laughs> because I, it just did. It just, my husband couldn't really smell it. And I think I'd gotten a lot of it out when I showed it to my friend and she's like, I think I see what you're saying, but it's not that bad. And I'm like, no, it smells like fish. <laughs> so it completely stopped me. I was going to jump on the Chatelaine Wednesday train and, um, and I'm not finding my picture. I found the starter picture, but, oh, there it is. There it is. Okay. This is called Alpine Garden. I've completely poached somebody's finished project picture um, because it just showed it better. It's amazing. Chatelaines, if you haven't looked up Chatelaines or you don't know what they are, I highly recommend Googling Chatelaines or Googling or like Pinterest searching them because they are, or going on Facebook, there's a couple groups that are pretty open groups. Ooh, that was a runaway needle. I'll have to find that before I move around much. Anyways, they're so spectacular and they do a lot of specialty stitches and this is how far I got before the fish smell bothered me. But I've had it sitting out for like th two, three months now, just kind of draped over where it gets a little bit of sun exposure and lots of open air and, I, and I've washed it thrice <laughs> and I think it's good to go. So my suspicion, here's my theory on it, you guys, because there it is. It's not super exciting, but um, I think that the bag I was using 
was where the odor was coming from. It might not have been the fabric. Maybe. Because it, it doesn't smell anymore. Um, which is a good thing. It was a large piece of fabric. Um, and so yeah, it doesn't smell anymore. So I've, it's floating outside of a bag right now and all of its guts, all of the flosses and stuff are up on top of my shelf so they don't get mixed with anything else. Um, so I'm going to make a new project bag, just a, a quilted project bag so it doesn't have anything that would lock a scent in and and then I'll get to I think that will work for tucking it away um and that's good I'm excited I might wait until like the new year to dive back into it and maybe January I'll start Chatelaine Wednesday or something like that um and just give it an hour or two maybe I'll commit to an hour every Wednesday um so that I make consistent project progress on it because they are large projects, involved projects. Um, but I love it. It's beautiful. And if I wind up moving away from the Pacific Northwest nest here, I'll need something that reminds me of home. So anyways, whoa. <laughs> wow, I'll just throw the next one at you. Uh, Garden Sampler by Carriage House Samplings, which I saw the New Hampshire Stitcher working on and I fell in love. And she is getting so close. She's like, all the way down this side and most of the way up to this side. She's she's making really good progress on hers. I thoroughly enjoyed the stitching I did on mine. <laughs> and, yeah. and this is a Bestitch Me Lugana that I had purchased for I was I was thinking I would start a different sampler on it and I wound up not using this is color lunar um, but when I decided not to use it for that it wound up being perfect for all these colors and and so yeah I love it it's such it's such a happy project to work on it's a fun one I'll definitely look forward to that one again whenever the mood hits or the springtime comes Okay, so we're solidly into May. May was a big month. I worked on a lot of different projects. I And I, I worked on almost a different project every day. This is Butterfly Garden by the Blue Flower. And it made me actually, normally I don't have a problem doing that. Like I've done it a few years in a row now where May is, you know, mania and this is where I am. Got most of the border. I just had like a corner of the border and a couple green sticks. So got a lot of stitching done on this one. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. Um, this fabric is, do I have a tag? No. Mystery fabric. I'm pretty sure it's a picture this plus. It's this really blue, pretty blue. Actually, it shows up a lot better than some fabrics do, like those jade ones that I love so much. Um, anyways, starting so, not starting, but doing so many projects, I don't know if it was because my health was being goobery by the end of the month or it just didn't hit well this year, but it left me feeling kind of fried. Um, so... I didn't do a lot of stitching in June, and then in July I wound up like cutting down and then in August I cut down more and I tried stitching on projects in three day chunks and I really found that to be calming to my rotation to do it three days at a time and just give a little bit more focus to projects. Uh, somebody mentioned that they like having multiple day stints because you're familiar with the chart when you go back to it with the you know, the colors and the the icons for the different colors. And and so there's just a grounded feeling. And let me show you the project. This is Yasmin's Made With Love, Never Forget, which I started. And this is another one of those emotional projects for me. So that's how far I got. And I had to change colors 
I loaded the needle and then I was like, hmm, I need a break. And that was okay. Because there's no rush on this one. Um, but it's beautiful. Um, anyways, so doing it three, three day chunks or ish roughly, I am finding currently to be very good for me. So I have continued that plan for September. Yeah. Not that I've logged anything in to specific days yet. I'll get there. I'm just catching up from, you know, my cold and then being out of town and then kind of our staycation here and <laughs> it takes a while to catch up on all the things. This one is an Etsy pattern, Starry Night. It's from a shop that is no longer with us. <laughs> um, but it was, we're now in July. I did Sci-Fi July and it's super fun to stitch. This was a restart because I had started it on different fabric. Which way does it go? This way. Uh, and it's it's much better on the fabric I've chosen. Which I will see if I have color information on. Anyways, I do not think I will do Stitch Mania again next year. I have decided that I'm going to I'm going to find some other acronym <laughs> for a theme and um, and do something else. I don't know what it will be yet. Shoot me your ideas in the comments if you have any ideas. Some fun theme for May. But um, where's the... Yeah, I don't have the fabric info. Some of my projects that I... Uh, started or kitted up before I was doing floss tube, I did not bother to keep the fabric information on because I just wasn't tracking it that way. I like having the information now. I'm glad I'm tracking it, but, um, but some of them I just don't have the information on anymore. Uh, the Captains by the Happy Sloth. I believe this is still available on Etsy and it's super fun. It's super simple block stitching. Once you have the outlines, it's just fill in. It's great. Um, more stitching than I thought. I thought I would get super far into it when I picked this up in July, but I, you know, I made good progress, but it wasn't what I thought it would be. I did have one comment that asked if I would be adding uh, Captain, oh my gosh, Pike to the end of it since they've released a season, a series now for it. I don't have the coverage I wanted on it, unfortunately, but it's DMC. It'll get a good bath. Hopefully the stitches will poof up and kind of fill in. Normally I don't have a problem. This is a 28 count even weave I'm stitching on it, just white. Um, and yeah, I, it's a little bit spacier than normally. Two threads over two. Uh, in answer to your question, I think it will depend on how much space I have at the end. So if I get all the other, there are four more captains to go in, depending on how much space they take off, take up. If I did have the space, it would be super fun to add Captain Pike to kind of do a, a color palette for that and add him at the end. Um, at this point, I'm kind of feeling like it would be super cute finished as a pillow. <laughs> um, but I mean, I've got a lot more stitching before I need to worry about finishing. But if I did finish, it would give a little bit more flexibility in being able to push those edges more. So the answer is, we'll see. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it's a great idea. I love it. I also love that they're doing a Captain Pike season, series. Why do I keep saying season? I don't know. I think it's great because you really got a good look at him in the more current run with uh, Chris Pine and Zachary. Um, I can't remember his last Quinn. Anyways, you got a good look at Captain Pike and kind of his influence on the story. And so I'm all for more background stories. <laughs> Um, okay, next one is I Want to Believe. It's based off the I Want to Believe poster. Uh, it's on Etsy from the shop Randomly Generated. 
and I'm stitching it on, picture this plus fawn, it was just a scrap off of, I think, our Christmas project. Not that that's important, but <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm really, literally, all I have to do is fill in. It's super mindless at this point, but I've completely tucked it away <laughs> until next July, probably, or next time I'm watching X-Files. Daniel, my husband, is not really in the mood for it right now, so we've kind of fallen off of our, our wagon on it, but it'll come back. Moods change. And he likes it, so it's not that he doesn't want to watch it. This is Not the Magister Yet by Mandarinks Designs on Etsy. And... This one also had a tragic ripping out. I had done all of the lighter purple you're about to see, and then I had to rip it out because I'd missed, <laughs> my eyeballs just completely missed like four rows. And so it was completely wrong. And that was one of those ones like how, this is so confetti, how would I even begin to keep track of it, an adjustment on it where it's affecting so much of the height. Um, so I pulled it out like a good girl and I put it back in and now he has eyeballs and is really starting to look like the little Grogu he is and I love it. <laughs> I'm excited to get down into the center though because that's where some of those really pretty colors are and you get C-3PO and R2-D2 and yeah, really fun. This is on a picture of this plus, what is the fabric called? I'm also stitching my turkey on it. So this is the other half of that piece. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, there it is, cauldron. Oh, it's such pretty fabric. It's so good. And the two pieces I'm stitching on that fabric are complete opposites of each other, and yet they both look awesome. It's, it's really neat fabric. I love it when they're versatile like that. Okay, so at the end of Sci-Fi July, I was ready for something different and I decided to, uh, let's see, ch -ch 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 pictures, pull out for the last week a little bit of Christmas in July. So I picked up a whip. This is Barbara Anna Santa's Trips Sal, which is a little blurry and glary. I'm sorry. I've got the lamp on because we're pretty overcast today, so sometimes the sun comes out and, oh my goodness, this is not working. <laughs> um, anyways, here, I'll just show you it. Show it to you. Um, anyways, I wanted to pull out some Christmas, and that was really fun. I've never stitched Christmas in July before, and I really actually enjoyed it. And I got two full squares done, and brought the border down a bit. I mean, it's over halfway, which is awesome. This is on an R&R &R linen beach brew. And I'm going to have a pretty decent scrap. I can make some ornaments or something small. But it's so cute. The next square is my favorite square, and it has them, Santa and his wife, riding a pig. <laughs> it's going to be so fun. Um, yeah. This one I'm really, really loving, and I'm going to finish it as a pillow, I've decided, which will be a cute finish, I think. Uh, <laughs> Go back up to the main page there. Okay, my second half of Christmas in July was The Gift of Peace by Lavender and Lace. It is, he is so handsome. I love Lavender and Lace patterns. There is something so satisfying. There's so much confetti work, especially in the greenery she does. But when it all comes together, it is magic. It is just juicy, beautiful. Oh, he's so handsome. I love it. I, I can hardly wait for it to be Christmas again, so I can work on it again. This is 32 Count Driftwood Fabrics by Steph. And you can see there's little hints of green, which are just, they're so good. <laughs> so satisfying. I love it. 
And I want it to be Christmas. But not prematurely, because I like the months before that too. <laughs> okay. All right, and that brings us to August. So anything that has not been shown in the whip parade, you'll now get to see. That's everything I did January through July. You know, just one or two or 30 or. <laughs> um, so to August stitching. This one was so hard to put down. Summer Quaker which is a stitch along with the Huga Stitcher, Samantha, for her birthday it was at the start of August. And I anticipated this all summer long and I can hardly wait till next summer when I can stitch it all summer long <laughs> because it is so fun and it's quick. And I've got a magnet on it. All right, I'm stitching it on Picture This Plus Sand. It's a 28 count, so it will be giant, but I don't even care because I love it. <laughs> it is so pretty. I'm making small adjustments. So my red is a Weeks Dye Works. It's my favorite red. What's it called? You would think it being my favorite red, I would remember, but new. It's called Turkish Red. It is just rich and there's a good variegation to it. So I've swapped out my red and then I swapped out my blue, which I don't know if you can see. It's very subtle. It's intentionally very subtle because um, this pattern is charted in DMC, but you know, I always like to mix it up a little bit. So I also have this blue is Weeks Dye Works Navy, which I had multiples of in my stash, so it's perfect. Um, and I'll, I'll throw in some others as I go, I'm sure. But I love it. I love stitching it. It's so much fun. I love the lighthouse. I started with that because it was my favorite part. <laughs> oh, so good. So much fun. Thank you, Samantha, for making a uh, stitch along with it because ooh to lolly, I loved it. Okay. Next one, this was another restart. I've had quite a number of them this year where I'd started them previously and either the fabric color just didn't float my boat or um, just get that floss out of the way. Oh my. Sorry. <laughs> I had a little, just a little moment there. Okay. Anyways, my fabric didn't work or something was off or just wasn't vibing. So this one I've restarted twice and I finally got, I'm finally happy with it. So, uh, Satsuma Street, Mermaid Lagoon. It's so cute. The colors are so bright and happy. I absolutely love them. Um, and this is how far I got. This is a uh, Ada, an Ada, 18 count Ada that I hand dyed. And I love I feel it feels like water. Doesn't it feel like water? It wound up really appropriate. <laughs> like the sunshine coming through and creating the whipple whipples, ripples and kind of light refractions through the water. I don't know. I love it. I'm happy with it. And yeah, it was a good solid start, a solid restart. Um, but then I got distracted with a Bella Filipina mermaid start, which wound up vacillating between being my favorite project and being a complete disaster. I'll show you that next. It's the Crystal Mermaid Aquabella. She is so beautiful. So many mermaids, and I love them. In fact, there's another Bellafina mermaid that is completely, it looks like a parrot. The colors are vivid and rich and beautiful, and I love that. It's so, I don't know, I love intense saturated colors. But this one is so gentle. It's so gentle, and there is a ton of like crinic or beadwork in it. Um, but 
but I love the palette and I stitched Oh golly, the first day I stitched on it for a few hours and almost everything was wrong. Again, I missed like four rows. Somehow when I'd counted over, when my eye went back to the pattern, I missed a whole freaking chunk of it. And so it nothing was lining up and I had to pull out almost everything I'd done that first night and I ripped out for a full day of stitching. Not, not a full 24 hours or anything like that, but it was a solid two or three hours that I was pulling out and then I put it away for a week and I pulled it back out and this is how far I got because I love it. It's so beautiful, but it takes focusing because so many of these little moments in her skirt are crinic or beads. There's a lot of gaps. So you're counting over on the linen threads. Um, so two threads per strip, per stretch stitch and, um, Anyway, you know how it goes. You're stitching at night and your brain decides it wants to play leapfrog and, you know, it's an adventure. Every day's an adventure. Anyways, I'm happy with how it's going. I'm loving how the colors are looking on my fabric, which is a uh, title. Yeah. Picture this plus title. And here's a question for you. I have not done a lot with Krynik. I've used it before in small amounts. But do you save on a project like this, you know how you kind of, typically people will save their beads till the end, the beading till the end. Um, it's not a hard and fast rule or anything, but do you do that with your Krynik as well? Will it, if I did it, if I started putting Krynik in at this point in the project, and let's say it took me another year or so to finish it, is that Krynik going to rub against my other stitches and create a fuzziness because it is the metallic-y rough texture? Or is it is it gonna be okay? Is it gonna, because it's not like it's gonna shuffle every moment of every day. I don't live in a constant earthquake. It'll just be sitting on the shelf. Do you think it'll be okay? Inquiring minds want to know because I also have another Bella Filipina that, oh, avalanche, <laughs> um, that I'm also ready, like there are gaps. I could start putting the Krynik in now at this point and kind of build the whole image out, or is it better to wait? Let me know, let me know. I'll be interested to hear your opinions. I, I can never promise that I will do it one way or another because <laughs> it just depends on what I think when I pull it out. But, but I would like to hear the opinions of people with more experience for sure. Um, okay. Next. Oh, this one I had so much fun with. Remember when I said I love lavender and lace? Yes. Yes, I do. Where's my picture? Hiding in my papers. Here we go. This is Nantucket Rose. She is so elegant. I want to be her. I want to be sitting there under that tree amongst the roses with the sound of the ocean, the smell of the salt in the air. I mean, yes, I want it. I love it. I love this project. It's a slow project just because I stitch the way I do, but, ah, uh, but I love her. And I really, I got done with my three days on her and I wanted three more days. That's how much I enjoyed this. I was not bored at all. So I filled in, I did her face, her hair. I did this tree. I started creating some of her skirt, which will drop down. You know, it's a large portion of the project. You can get so much done when you do three days in a row. It's amazing. Oh, she's so lovely. I don't know what the fabric is. It's just a dove gray. Um, I bought it at an estate sale and it had no tag. So beautiful. I love this project. I love this project. <laughs> I love so many of my projects. Okay, oh, oh, remember that devil Ada? This is the one. This Ada is scratchy and icky and stiff, 
I love the project. This was a Christmas present, I think, from my mom. Thank you, mom. I still love it. I think it's so pretty. I love how the light plays on it. And, and most of these clouds in the water are half stitches, so it should go super fast, one would think. Except for the fabric is just, I mean, you could like scratch yourself on the edge. So that's where I am. I think I had this little bit done and I added in this. And then I was like, mm. and I didn't want to go any farther because if I do restart it, because it is a kit, I don't want to run out of floss. Now, that being said, I think, I think it's a DMC it's kitted with, maybe. Something very similar to a DMC. And I do have my DMC color card, so I could substitute as long, you know, I could make it work if I did run low on this blue. Anyway, so I paused because I'm undecided. I don't know. I might try giving it a bath as is and see if it won't soften up. I've done that with a couple others and it helped, but I don't know. I'm torn. I'm torn between a complete restart and and just making it work. I don't know. We'll see. I have till next summer to decide because <laughs> I'm completely in like soup and flannels and cozy blankets and apple cider and pumpkins and I want fall. Fall has started. Fall started September 1st <laughs> in my brain. Um, tiny seaside town which I started on a whim this summer. It's so cute. It's a new chart this year and I love it. It's my first little tiny town and I think I'm gonna do, if not all, at least most of the series and do them as little flat finishes. This is where I got, I only had this one house done. So I got a lot of stitching done on this in three days. You, I mean, you look at that and you're like, okay, that's three days stitching. It's only like a couple weeks I could have this completely done. So it'll probably get done next summer, but super fun. And I'm about to get all the fun bits, get to all the fun bits too, because there's a fish up here. And then you've got the little island with the lighthouse over here and you come this way and you get, I think it's a little crab and like all the fun details instead of just houses. Not that houses aren't fun, houses are cute. I mean, it's kind of the point of these projects, <laughs> but yeah. Oh, they just released in the newest market releases for the fall, a tiny autumn town. Oh, it's so cute. It is so cute. I'll definitely be doing that one. Probably not this year because I've got other projects that I had already slated for. Man, it's getting dark in here. We lost our light. Um, they're already slated for, for fall starts. I kind of had that, I've kind of had that lined up for a while. Anyways, this unfortunately is black and white picture. <laughs> Ooh, ah, it's beautiful. Uh, this is, uh, not currently available. It was an, uh, online, uh, words. My brain is dying. Um, it's called Watercolor Land, Watercolor Landscape. <laughs> and uh, it was an Etsy purchase from Little House Needleworks. I believe they do. She's tried to work around the... Uh, she's a Russian designer. She's tried to work around the uh, Etsy embargo, if you will but I haven't really found, I haven't, I haven't really found where to get her stuff um, currently without going directly through her site and emailing her and kind of that whole thing. And that's okay because I have several of her designs that I love and have yet to stitch, <laughs> this being one of them. Um, anyways, I made really good progress on this in three days. I'm starting to get some of the, uh, Uh, kind of seagrass, if you will, landscaping happening here. The mountains are pretty much done. Her projects tend to be very backstitch heavy. And so this is just 
stage one that I'm working on, but it's lovely. It's just on a loosely woven linen I had in stash. And it's one of those ones that's better from afar. You start to see the, the image. So pretty. So pretty. I'm, I'm enjoying this one. I really had fun working on that one for three days also. Again, considerable progress from where I had started. And yeah, it felt really good. Okay, coming down to the last few. Woot, 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 woot. Okay, this is the Shores of Hawk Run Hollow Carriage House Samplings. I have three or four of their um, Hawk Run Hollow designs. I have the, and I love them. And I've made tweaks on them. So originally I was gonna do the whole thing. I kind of talked about this in my last video that I'm going to adjust it. So that it's just a two, one, two panel, <laughs> I guess you will. Uh, so I'll do five of the 11 designs. I had to do quick math there in my head. Um, and I've kind of been playing with that. I did some, I made a copy of the backside shows the full chart. And so I, I copied that and I've kind of been playing like a puzzle with layouts and stuff. And I'm kind of locked in, unfortunately. I already have two started. So I can't, I wish I'd thought of this last year. <laughs> um, I didn't get a lot done, but I added this fish and maybe it was just that fish. Maybe that's all I did because I mostly played with layouts. So I've already done the lighthouse, which I mean, that would have been there no matter what, I love it. I might not have done this block if I was planning this right now, but it's okay. It'll be great. It'll be great. It will be great. Um, I definitely want to get this house in. I love this house. I really like this block. And then maybe, maybe the whale. Oh no, I can only add two more. That's, that's the problem. <laughs> Cause I'm going to do the big sail ship. So I love this block, but I don't really want like the ship in the bottle and the big ship if I'm limiting myself to just a center section. So I'll probably do a house and, and this one. I think that's where I'm leaning right now. Though I like the whale. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Clearly, I am undecided. I'm also making um, substitutions. It calls for either DMCs or silks, and I'm doing a combination of DMCs over dyes, and then my water is a Gloriana silk because it's stormy and gorgeous. So, didn't do a lot of stitching on that one. I don't think, I, I think I gave it one day. I didn't do the full three day rotation on it, but that's because I got excited about this last one, which is, I want to be in an octopus's garden in the shade. I totally butchered that, but that's fine. Blackbird Designs, Octopus's Garden. I listened to the song while I was stitching it the, with the first few minutes, and then it was in my head the rest of the time. <laughs> and I had started this, I do have a little, ooh, I do wanna show a little before picture because this was a restart. And I'm just kinda give you like an, a feel for what it was. So this is, oh, fiddle. I keep touching the screen. There we go. So if we can get a good angle on this without the, uh, it might not work. See, we've just got too much glare because of that lamp. I have to think about that for this winter. Oh, that's pretty good. I mean, a little glary, but <laughs> at a weird angle. But you can see it was a raw linen. It's the same linen I stitched my um, yellow submarine. I don't know if you can see it. So it's the same linen this is stitched on. And Originally, I'd only planned on doing the two, the octopus's garden and the yellow submarine. They kind of thematically fit. They could be hung near each other. 
but I finished this years ago and I don't think I could get this frame to match the other one like I'd originally thought anymore. I did not buy one a second frame at the time. I just didn't have the money for it, honestly. And so because, and now I'm doing Strawberry Fields Forever. So I've added a third one into the mix that's not going to match at all. Um, I wouldn't have wanted to stitch that one on this fabric anyways. So all that in mind, swirling in my brain, I found a blue to stitch it on. And um, it was not my idea to stitch it on a blue. I saw it on Pinterest or something somewhere and I loved it. I thought, oh, that's such a good idea. It's like it's underwater, it's so cute. And the colors popped, they were a bit brighter on the blue. So I had this scrap. You guys, it's almost done. <laughs> I mean, it would take a couple more days, I think, because there's some fill-ins, some details. Um, one of the greens I'm going to change. So you can see here, this upper green on the leaves even in the picture, it's a bit brighter. There's a good contrast between that and the darker green. And it calls for, let me see what the name of the color is. Oh, that's probably really annoying, sorry. Uh, endive. And this dye lot of endive is very brown. It's very brown. And so it blended a lot with this color right here. And I didn't, I want more contrast. I want that pop. It also comes into, it's the rest of the color in the octopus, comes into the tail here, it's the face. So I want a good, a good fun green that will match the palette. So I'm gonna go digging through my stash before I go any farther. But I started stitching this with my friend Jill. Hi Jill. And she did, she's doing a full conversion. It's amazing. She's so nervous about it, but it's absolutely beautiful. Jill, you should post it on Instagram and show people how beautiful it is. Because her green, her fabric is more of a ocean, I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's deeper. It's more in the green side of blue and and so some of these colors just did not show up at all. I'm like using my face. Um, <laughs> I need to get a little clip or something. People use little clips and that's a really good idea. I don't have any quick at hand, but um, so there's a set of waves that comes along the top and that's the same color as this, I believe. See, the colors aren't showing great. They're really blendy and they are blendy, but this is actually a blue, like a really dark black blue. And I tell you what, when I put that, the words in, it completely came to life. It was really fun to put the words in. Anyways, she's doing a complete color conversion and her waves are actually, it's Cottage Garden, no, not Cottage Garden, Gentle Art Samplers Lagoon, which is this, fabulous teal oh it's so pretty it hers looks it makes me think of a tapestry it is so so pretty it's coming out great it's night and day different from mine but beautiful anyways it was super motivating to start it with her and i took this to utah with me and i just didn't work on anything else i loved it i had so much fun and even though we only stitched for like an hour or so at a time while the baby took a nap Got a lot of progress. This thing goes quickly once you get it started. Anyways, super fun. I loved it. I love how it's turning out. I'm ready to stitch on something else because like I said, I've given it more than a week, but but I'm really, really tickled with how it came out. And I'll definitely make a note about my green or pick something before I put it away for sure. Um, so that when I pull it out again next summer, it's just going to, I I think... I'll get it finished in, just like I said, a couple of days. So yeah, that is what I've stitched on from January to September. <laughs> many, many things. Uh, so much fun. I hope you enjoyed seeing everything. I sure had fun digging it all out again. And 
you can see like I love everything but they're definitely food projects I'm just itching to stitch on again and it'll be really fun to come back to them um, okay so for September my theme is owls and mushrooms outside of my birthday stitch which has no owls or mushrooms and I'm gonna get my little basket here of September -y projects oh don't fall I'll use my knee there we go so I'm gonna pull this one out again which I worked on last fall I made pretty good progress on it I think again doing the a couple days two to three days chunks I'll get some good progress on that um, I'm gonna pull out my Gaia Earth Goddess by Bella Filipina um, which will be fun to work on I also have another Earth Goddess sorry for the zipper there I thought this is the Joan Elliott one who I think is just beautiful just beautiful and I kind of wish I'd stitched her on a different fabric but she'll be great she'll be great I'm going to pull out my version of I thought I had all my zippers down I'm so sorry you guys my version of autumn at hawk run hollow and I say my version because I'm abbreviating it so this is the original which is gorgeous and huge and would take me a lifetime but I already have Halloween at hawk run hollow so I'm taking these two out completely I think I'm using both of them in my Halloween one. I've I've totally jumbled that one up. And I'm cutting this one down to three. So I'm doing the top banner, which I think is what I worked on last year. And then I'm going to do these six uh, squares underneath it. So it's just a little bit more achievable for me. And it's my favorite, favorite blocks. So I think I'll pop down into the owls. Owls and mushrooms, right? be fun to get some work in on that um, and then I've got a few new starts so this one is my birthday present from my mom last year and it is the same company as the lighthouse and it had super stiff great Ada so I have substituted it with a picture of this plus that's very comparable to the gray and we'll be stitching it on that because it's such a cute little curious owl. Oh, you guys, while I was in Utah, did I say? Oh, I got to touch, like I got to pet a spectacular horned owl at the Renaissance Fair. It was so fun. Her name was Pumpkin. She had the most gorgeous eyes and my dreams came true it was magic it was so much fun <laughs> so much fun in my little nod to sampler September this has neither mushrooms oh it does have an owl it totally counts it fits I decided to start my uh, adventure sampler which I am so excited to start I have chosen fresco picture this plus fresco for my background which is a little bit more earthy than the blue and pink they had as theirs so that'll be fun I've not pulled any threads for it I realize now as I look at it but that's okay I'll just do it later in the month it gives me some time to pull that together um, I think it's so cute and it's got a squatch I was gonna save it for October for Sasquatch day but I want to start it now so <laughs> I've got lots of ghosts and cryptids and stuff to stitch in October so we'll still get some fun stuff in and the last thing I'm gonna start I'm waiting on my floss to arrive because I didn't have any of the colors for it but I'm going to be stitching with I think it's Kelly pages and stitches is it her oh fiddles one of my floss tube friends I'm gonna have to go back and look because it's been so long since we talked about it I don't remember who it was I'll find out who I'm stitching this with but um, I shared this pattern when I got it arranging mushrooms and all its glare it's so cute ink circles and I'm gonna stitch it on this <laughs> it's so interesting it's so wild what a wild background to put it on 
but I think it'll be super fun. Very mossy. Uh, anyways, so I'm gonna start that and I'll figure out who I'm stitching it with because I'm completely blanking. I'm so bad with names, you guys. It makes me feel like a bad person. <laughs> But it's just, I have a brain like a steel sieve. It like, I just, information just flows away. And I remember the, the outlines of details and none of the specifics. Am I alone in this? <laughs> I don't know. Um, okay, that's what I'm working on this month as of today, which will be super fun. I'm also going to try to catch up on my homegrown, not homegrown, um, my Castle Homecoming Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery style. I completely dropped it through August, but I was current at the 1st of August. So I want to, I have until the 20th or something, I think, before they drop part four to catch up on part three. And it has Nessie. <laughs> It has a little sea monster in it, so it's so adorable. It's so cute. I can hardly wait to stitch it. So I'm going to also try to catch up on that as well. Yeah, I think. Let me look at my notes. Yeah, that's it. That's that's the whole shebang. That's, a, that's the whip parade. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. Now, as a last thing, it was my birthday. We've reached 5,000 subscribers, which is amazing and my floss tube anniversary was on August 18th so I have some giveaways 5,000 subscribers means five giveaways so let me pull them up <sighs> do I have them all sitting here oh my goodness where did they go I thought I had them all right here Oh. Pause. <laughs> Five giveaways. I'm back. I don't know why they were. I thought they were all sitting right there and then they weren't. And anyways, they were quick to hand. Um, so most of these come from my stash. One of them, though, and I'll do that first. I have I do floss tube videos if you're new with me today I do floss tube videos but then I also do what I call quilting bee videos which are quilting and uh, anything that I kind of lump into that category and and that's really fun it's really fun to share that facet of my uh, craft room as well so I the first one I had a company reach out to me called Stitching Lane and they offered me some goodies to give away or to keep as I saw appropriate and along with a, a discount code. So if you want to go shopping with them, which their site is delightful, there's got some really fun things. Um, the code is my name, Laura, and you get 15% off and it's good through December this year. So the, this first giveaway comes from them and it is a full kit. So if you're a quilter, this is, this is your moment. Um, it's so pretty. So you have the panel in the middle and all these beautiful trees that are pieced around it. And I think it would be really beautiful all done up here. I'll open so you can see the colors they have kitted. So here's our panel. I don't want to fold it too much just because I'll never get it the right shape again <laughs> to go back in the bag. But here's some of, they're always so much prettier in person, like than the picture, I mean. So there's the first half of your panel. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then you've got these gorgeous batiks and complimentary. I'm sure they're from the line of fabric. So you get all of those colors in your trees. I want to steal that one. That one's so pretty. Ooh, and that one's so pretty. <laughs> um, maybe I should have looked at this before giving it away. No, no, it's beautiful. Anyways, so 
If you would like to win, um, you know, like everybody does, please be over 18. Please don't use any of the trigger words. I don't want spam bots and creepy people in our comments. We want to keep it, you know, safe and happy and crafty. <laughs> um, so don't use any of, you know, any of those trigger words. Um, so we're going to call this winter. That's our keyword. So use winter in the comments if you want this full kit from Stitching Lane. Um, and then the next, I'm all done with this pattern. I always make working copies these days, so the pattern is not written on or anything, and it's not been bent too much. It's basically new, other than, you know, the plastic is a little, a little traveled. <laughs> But this was a super fun one to do. I have the my version of it. Um, it's not a big project. It went really fast. I stitched this last summer, and um, and it's I'm not going to stitch it again. So I'll pass it along. This one, let's say a beach for this one. I should be writing these down. Winter beach. Winter beach. Um, Plum Street Samplers. This one's so cute, but I have two copies of the pattern and I certainly don't need to. So I'll pass that along as well. It's so cute. I love the squirrels and the sheep <laughs> and the pineapple. Oh my goodness. So cute. So let's say flag. If you want this one, write that down. Flag. This one is a sampler, Scarlet House. It's beautiful. I would love to see this one in person. I think it would just be really elegant. Uh, it's called the Black Dog Sampler. So let's say dog. Dog. And last but not least, something seasonal. Again, I have two of this one, Pumpkin Farm by Blackbird Designs. This series is really cute. It's part of the anniversaries of the heart and that all has little houses and stuff, but they're cute on their own too. Um, really fun, really, really fun. So let's call this one Pumpkin. Oh, it's so fun. Pumpkin. Okay, so. I'll put these in a safe spot right here and I'll be excited to see your comments on this. Awesome. That'll be so fun. Thank you so much for the last year. It's been such a wild ride. It's been, <laughs> you know, it's been so much fun. You guys have been so welcoming and supportive of me and all my craziness and goofiness and, and, and I've just had so much fun getting to know this cross stitch community and quilting i've had some wonderful quilting conversations too and it's just i love doing this i i so enjoy it i am looking forward to another year of floss tube so thank you for liking and subscribing and for joining me on this cross stitching journey and i i'm excited to see where the next year takes us uh for now i'm excited to see where september takes me <laughs> It's a wild ride. It's a wild ride. I hope you're all well. I hope school's got started off smoothly. If you've got kiddos in school, uh, if you don't and you're like me and you're just footloose and fancy free, I hope you're enjoying the end of summer as we start to transition into fall. And I think if you're on the other side of the world, it's the opposite, right? You'd be going into spring. I don't know. I've always lived on this side of the equator. <laughs> um, anyways, I hope you're all well, no matter where you are, and that you're getting some good stitching in and that life is treating you well. I will be back soon. We're not gonna say dates because life is too flexible for that apparently, uh, but I will be back. And you'll definitely get a quilting video, quilting bee video tomorrow to catch up because um, I want to get back on my, at my sewing machine and I don't feel like I can do that until I share what I've done yet. 
<laughs> done thus far. Um, I'm also going to be transitioning into my autumn stitching, well, my autumn quilting, my autumn projects. So some of the old familiar ones you've been seeing uh, so far will be tucked away for a while, which is fun. That's always exciting to kind of swap over into new projects when you've been focusing on some others. Anyways, take care, my friends. Happy stitching. I'll see you soon.